Well, I think Hong Kong continues to be the most important channel for financial activity between the world's two largest economies. So in that sense, it is a, um, a useful city, um, to use the word useful. Um, from, a, from the perspective of whether, you know, Hong Kong's uh, relatively open governance and, and, uh, and quasi-democratic system would have a positive impact on, on the rest of China, I think from that perspective, um, people's uh, level of hopefulness is less than it was previously. And so in a sense, the political importance of Hong Kong uh, is viewed more as a cautionary tale rather than as an opportunity for uh, improved communication between uh, China and the West. Ambassador, we've long spoken about a potential decoupling between China and the United States. Is there now a decoupling between Hong Kong and the United States? Uh, in recent months, we've been talking about the Treasury Department, the Commerce Department wanting to uh, blacklist or even sanction these Chinese tech companies. And then we've got DD potentially delisting from the United States. And then now there's talk about Hong Kong's FWD. That is an insurance company that was aiming for a U.S. listing and uh, getting basically basically blocked from doing that. Are we going to see potentially a decoupling of Hong Kong and the U.S.? Well, I think that, that the uh, it's quite likely that we'll see uh, IPOs in particular and financial activity taking place in Hong Kong that might have otherwise taken place in New York involving Chinese firms. That, in a sense, is, is a decoupling, but the U.S. investors are continue to be very interested in China. And so they'll be using Hong Kong as that financial channel. So I, d I don't foresee a, a full-on decoupling between the, the either the U.S. and Hong Kong or the U.S. and China in a financial sense, but it is becoming more cumbersome. And there's uh, addi additional burdens for uh, due diligence and, and accountability that are being applied because of the, the political situation. So it, it is challenging. I would also point out that that COVID and Hong Kong's policies toward the coronavirus pandemic have really had a big impact on the amount of traffic back and forth between the United States and Hong Kong. The difficulty in getting to the city now, I think, is having rather a serious impact on, on, uh, on the amount of connectivity between the two economies. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.